Okay, so what we want to do right now is I'm going to look at the um, the lithium iron phosphate pack that we had that um, essentially we let some stuff go on top of it, caught fire, and uh, we put it out. And here's the damages. I'm not sure how hot it got in there, but it's worth kind of seeing, you know, what will happen here. So I'll let you see what, what's going on, and um, you can you can tell me for yourself what you think. <laughs> So here it is. This is our pack that we had. So, as you can see, I had it in this um, this plastic crate, and I had great stuff all throughout the bottom there. And uh, the great stuff was keeping it very stable. So we drove a few thousand miles with this in our vehicle, and it was um it was pretty safe for a while. But um, what I failed to do was put a top on it so that, um, so that no metal would be able to come down and, um, and arc. Because obviously there's a positive and there's a negative. So if something touches these two that's metal, it will spark up. And that's pretty much what happened. We had a broom handle in here that, uh, that went on top of it and, uh, and caused it to catch some other things on fire. What's nice though right now is that this thing has um, it's still showing full charge voltage so each cell each bank of cells is around 3.2 volts um, the whole thing is 13.28 so it's it's holding up really well considering so we've had it outside for a while i'm going to take it all apart um, clean it up put it into something new a little bit safer put um, build it into a 48 volt array and then i've got a new battery manager that's going to balance it at the top, you know, when it hits around 3.6 volts per cell. Let's just give you some closer shots to show you what it looks like. It obviously didn't look nearly this dirty. I had wrapped the base of these in, uh, in cellophane, so that way I could pull them out of the great stuff if I needed to at some point. Um, and then that's black duct tape that I had used to duct tape them all together, hold them in place. Um, all these bolts really make me nervous. I'm not sure I want to continue with that strategy. Uh, maybe do shorter bolts, I'm not sure. However, it's very stable. You can tell by I'm trying to move it. Like, the whole thing is, it doesn't look like it would be stable, but it really is. Like rock solid, this thing. You know? And just to give you a little bit better view of what had happened, how much heat this thing had, I'll show you the, the bin here. Well, I know these batteries. <laughs> Tend to make people nervous, and for good reason. There's a massive amount of power in there. Um, the next go round, I think what I'm going to try to do is figure out how I can make it so that the if the whole case box gets inverted, um, if the whole RV flips over, essentially it'll be strapped down. Um, these suckers won't go anywhere, and it will stay safe. So, so that's the goal. We'll see how it goes next time around. Three point three one eight holding. Three point three two. Pretty stable. So, in the next few weeks or so, I'm looking to just do a lot more videos of these kinds of things because I am a fan of of having. You know, getting into this kind of battery technology. Um, the, the reason I like these more than anything else is because of their cost. Compared to other types of cells you can purchase, they're uh, a lot cheaper per kilowatt hour you know, for, the, for the low volume buyer like we would be. So what's nice about this is that you can build up a nice array for solar off-grid type situation and um, you wind up with a good chunk of power for not so much money. So that is good. 
what I'm probably also going to do is uh, is buy a whole bunch more of these and um, maybe even offer some up to y'all to you know through eBay or just you know, somehow because these things are I just have packed so much power. Okay, so this cell is separated. Let's see if I can pull it out. Oh man, that was definitely a good way to go. Did you see this? the bottom part. That's what it looked like when I put it together. Bottom part and the great stuff. And the top part charred by flames. The cellophane is a great idea because the great stuff will stick to this. these batteries. I've done that in the past. You can see I had these in the back of a Prius, and so I had to pry them out. And it was really, really nerve-wracking taking these cells and having to pry them out. So just for your reference, uh, this negative right here, this is the, the negative of the 12 volt pack. It went negative, positive, to negative, to positive, to negative, to positive, to negative, to positive, and out through this wire. Um, this negative right here is comes in from the battery manager. Uh, and then this one went to the inverter. The inverter can draw much more power than the battery manager can provide. And because of that, you know, it would basically just, it would, this would sense that there's too much current draw and it would just pop it off. This is a 12 volt inverter it was able to draw something like 150 amps. This is probably only good for 40 or so amps, I don't remember, but I know it's not 150. Uh, plus you can tell by the wire sizes and how big the terminals are there, it's just not big enough. So, however, when you're charging and discharging a pack like this, the inverter knows once it gets below a certain voltage, it's going to shut it off, so it's going to be safe. Um, the inverter will shut off at 10.5 volts, which these are good down to 2.5 each, which means 10 volts, so th these would have been fine with the inverter. Now, um, but we also had this hooked up to everything else that was 12 volts in the RV, so if we just had the lights on or a single light and it just went on for a period of time, eventually the voltage would drop too far, <clears throat> and this would have to cut it off, so that way we didn't destroy batteries. I've destroyed a number of these batteries by letting the voltage drop in them too much, and this will keep them from doing that. That's what these sensor wires are for. Also, this is the place where the charge comes in too. So the solar panels and, and or the 12 volt charger would come in through this wire on the negative side, and that way, if they became overcharged, this could cut it off, and it would let them balance out a bit. It would also use these wires to put a load on the cells to draw out some of that power on each particular bank that's too high. So, so that works. That works pretty well. Um, this is kind of a, just a cheap little eBay, thirty or forty dollar battery manager, <clears throat> and that worked. It worked great so far. We never had any issues with over voltage or under voltage, so it was good. So next thing I'm going to do is, what I want to do is uh, I need to pull all these batteries apart and I want to make sure that we can get the, um, make sure that they're all still okay, and that they'll hold at the 3.2 volts. Um, once I pull these cells apart, they'll be, it'll be pretty obvious whether or not they can hold on to uh, that voltage that they currently got. I mean, to be fair, I'm fairly hopeful with these things, 
because they've been holding for you know a few weeks now as they've been sitting there balanced so if there was a cell that was dead and it was drawing then there's there's a chance that that would have pulled down the rest of the cells um, in because the, the, I have 13 parallel if you noticed so a 13 times four so it would probably have pulled some of them down but they're all pretty well balanced not sure exactly if that's true because a dead cell might not actually have any draw at all so it might not affect too much but um but just the fact that the, the pack has been balanced leads me to believe it'll be okay but I'm gonna pull them all apart and test them just to make sure all right let's start pulling these things apart and uh, and checking them out let's see what's up Obviously, if I touch this to that, if I get this close, it will spark. And uh, it is a nerve-wracking, but generally, sparks sparks aren't going to kill you. But if you do it too much, they heat up the batteries and they can you know, hurt their life. Um, perhaps, actually, I don't know, I don't know what else you can do, but... Why it's so freaky. The idea is I don't I want these batteries to stay still. When I put this all together, I want I that's why I taped them together. So they would stay as close together as possible. Put this down on take a few tabs, pull them together. This whole process I had for this and it actually worked pretty well. It wasn't that hard to do. So see, you just pull it right out. That's it. Right? So the way I had I had put them on was I went I took this, put that in the middle, put that in the middle, and then just kind of and did that all the way down. Took these, put them like that, just kind of draped them, and then you know kind of pushed like this to make it open at the bottom, and then slid it down on, and then you know. Seemed to be a good solution. Last time, if you saw my other video, you'll see that I had soldered them, and you can see some of the residual soldered crap on there. But, uh, but you know, soldering, soldering is okay. I think if you've got a long series strain, perhaps. But once you get more than two in parallel, you know, then you're trying to solder one, two, three tabs together. Once you do the two on this one, the two on the next one, and then those together. So once you get two or beyond, it's probably just not going to work. So this is a good solution. Since I'm doing 48 volts this next time, I'm going to wind up probably just getting shorter bolts and doing three in one, three in the next. So I might get like two inch bolts or less. I'll measure it out. In fact, now's probably a good time to measure. So there's four on that one, two there, uh, three there, four there. So if I'm trying to connect three and three, then I'd be looking at a bolt that's like I don't know, two inches would probably do it. Okay, as you see, we've got the multimeter set up. It's in DC volts. Let's see, just preliminary. Um, how these cells are looking against each other. Three point three two four seems fine. Three point three two four. Test each one of them. We'll regroup them. I'll probably reduct tape them into groups of threes, as they should be, and uh, and then press from there.
So these are probably worth examining a bit further. Um, you'll see here that there's, there's chars on the side here and that it was so hot in there that this duct tape melted to it. So, yeah, we'll see here what this looks like. But so far I can just scrape this off and even though they got a little bit charred, it's not looking too bad. So I got through the entirety of these cells and um, I broke them all apart and as you saw we got the numbers on them. The range is not that far off. We have anywhere from a whole bunch of them at 3.319, so 3.32, um, 3.23, uh, there's some that are a little low, 3.289, see if they've changed at all. And if they haven't changed then that's fantastic. Then I'll just see what's up, see what we need to do with them, and um, come up with a way to put them back into the packs. So the challenge I'm going to be having now is that we've got three, only three in parallel per um, per run. So because we have uh, 48 volts and I'm going to be doing 16 in series, we're looking at three parallel. So the way I had it before, it was 13 in parallel, so they would balance out really well. Now with only three in parallel, they might not balance out so well, but um, but it should be fine. It should be fine. So uh, I'll keep you posted, and thanks for watching.